Hi there. Welcome to Discussions with the Fashion Masters. My name is Deanna Hansen. I'm the founder of Fluid Isometrics and Block Therapy, and I'm being joined by Dr. Marlene Siegel. She and I together created the Fascia Decompression for Your Fur family, as well as Lisa Rigaud, one of our block therapy instructors who is also a vet tech and has really taken this work and done some amazing thing with animals. So thank you both so much for joining. I can't wait to dive into this world and learn what has come since uh, Dr. Siegel, you and I created this almost a year ago now. Wow. It's been a while. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So um, Lisa, just come out and say hello to everybody. Cause we're going to start with Dr. Siegel, but I just want everybody to say hello to you. Where are you? And um, you know, why, why are you so passionate about this work? Uh, hi everyone. Um, so I'm Lisa, Lisa Rigo. And yeah, I, um, I just started, I, when I was, since I've been blocking um, and this pet program has been available, it's been, uh, I jumped right into it being an animal health tech and uh, just taken off. I started just with, with friends, friends, dogs, and then I contacted a vet and got, got into being referred by pets or by, by her. So it's, yeah, it's just, just been quite an experience to, um, to make these animals to yeah to help them with their pain I, I i i'm amazed by the results so awesome so once we uh finish up with uh dr siegel and, and a little bit of a presentation we'll uh learn a little bit more about um the experiences that you've had so dr siegel why don't you jump out and share your experience with this work with all that you know i mean my gosh you've got so many so many beautiful talents from the medical to the alternative. I know you have a very specific way of wording it. So just jump out. And introduce yourself and so I do bioregulatory medicine, which means that we, I look for the root cause of the problem. So that's basically not doing symptom suppression. What most people experience when they go to the veterinarian is they do their exam, they take their history, and then they're going to give you a pill for the ill, a shot, a diet for the disease, whatever. But they're not really understanding the biology of the body and what is going wrong that is leading to that symptom. And so I lead with that. Like, what are we doing that's creating the problem? And then how can we support that animal through proper diet, digestion, detoxification, support the mitochondria, and all of that? And where the block therapy is, or we're going to call it the fascia decompression for our pets, uh, where that comes into play is the combination of the lymphatic and the fascia. So the lymph system runs through the fascia. And it's so interesting that we didn't even know how to talk about fascia 20, 30 years ago. It's, so it's really very, very new. And what I'm finding is that when I can reset the elements of this animal's body, do chiropractic adjustment, we do the lymphatic therapy, and then I send the pet parents home doing the fascia decompression at home. And it's this beautiful synergy of ongoing care where they're able to really make a difference because it's the pet parents that's sitting in front of the television and holding their animal and doing this work, but it's the love and the, that energy and that desire for their pet to live the healthiest, longest life possible that they're infusing along with their touch and along with the mechanisms that we're teaching them how to touch them in a way that actually releases the fascia. And I, I think it's like what Lisa said, we're just seeing, I hate to use the word miraculous, we are seeing the body return to function the way it was designed to function. We call it miraculous because we've messed it up so bad that it, it's like trying to work despite us. And now we're supporting it. We're, in my practice, I teach the pet parents how to stop doing the things that are causing the disease, how to set the body up for healing and repairing. And then when we add this piece, they're successful. They're actually able to see the changes that their pets make. And it's not months and years. It is minutes. I'm going to show you a case later where in six hours, we reversed a problem that this dog had for six weeks. And wow. in six hours, he's back to normal and has not relapsed. And, and what I love is, I mean, people and animals, I mean, it's the same thing. We all need to do all of these things. We're all living in the same terrain, the same environment of toxins and of stress, yeah. and all of these things. So to, and, and, and really what we're simply doing is we're just getting the body back to the state that it's supposed to be in. 
So it's the, the most natural state to be in, yet we're so far away from that state that we need a little bit of attention and help. So for people themselves, I mean, block therapy is a process that you can do to do that home care, self-care practice, but it doesn't eliminate the need to go and see your medical doctor and to understand what's going on in your body. We're similar to this. You want to make sure that your veterinarian is also involved in the process so that as, especially as you can see the changes, like you can see, you can track those changes through the tests that they can take as well. So I'm going to let you dive in because you're the, you're the expert, Dr. Siegel. (laughs) All right. Well, you know, what you said was very profound because when we are helping these animals, we absolutely don't want to do any harm. So if your pet is showing a symptom already, it's almost guaranteed that the fascia decompression is going to help, but don't use it as an excuse or as a a reason to not go and get a good diagnosis. Because I'll tell you, there's um, a lot of things that we don't appreciate. In fact, um, there's a case that I've had, she's here right now and Uh, She had cancer back uh, about two or three years ago, and the cancer was gone, and they've been doing the work at home, and she came up this weekend for just a tune-up. Like, we were just, she had a nosebleed, so the owners were a little concerned, and so we did a workup, and it turns out that she has a huge abdominal tumor in her abdomen. Now, to look at her, you would never have known that. But we were able to pick it up. I won't say early because the mass is large, but at least we know it's there and we can make decisions before we're in a life-threatening condition. So it is really important to understand what's going on with your pets. And they won't always show you pain the way you think. They're not always going to cry out loud. They're not always going to limp. They're not always going to exhibit pain in a way that you mentally recognize it. So it really is important. Get your blood work done. Get the right testing done for deficiencies and toxicities. And get your x-rays done so that you know there isn't something severe under the hood. And we're really doing health care then. We're really supporting that animal by, like Deanna said, we're putting everything back to where it should be. In today's world, it's not a question of, are we going to now eliminate electromagnetic frequencies? Are we going to eliminate toxins? No, we are not going to eliminate it. We can reduce it by consciousness and we can mitigate it with the correct tools and supplements and things that we can do to help mitigate it but we are we're living in a toxic soup and it's not going to go away we're not going to get rid of 5g so we need to come up with creative solutions and i think that the fascia decompression for our pets and the block therapy for our humans is one of those key things because everything goes through the fascia everything connects to the fascia the communication everything. So if we can keep our fascia healthy, if we can keep our lymphatic healthy, and we can keep the six organs of elimination, the kidney, the colon, the lungs, the liver, the skin, and the lymphatics and fascia, then we have a much higher chance of living a healthy, vibrant, thriving life, not one where we're surviving from the next pill to the next pill and the next treatment and the next doctor's visit. That's not thriving. That is surviving in a toxic world. And I don't think we came here to do that. I think we came here to be vibrant and thriving and to be problem solvers and to live with joy and gratitude and happiness and to help the world be a better place than what we found it in. And I also love how you've mentioned how the lifespan of the pet that we see as normal is so not normal. Mm-hmm. Can yeah. you talk about that? Well, yeah, our pets are living seven years shorter, seven years shorter than they did 20 years ago. And yet people think, well, we have all this modern medicine, we must be doing so good. No, we're doing worse. And that's because the level of toxicity has gone up and we're feeding Franken food. So we're really contributing to the problem. Our animals really should live into their 30s. There are Animals in the Guinness World Book of Record back in 2010, that was a cat that was 38 years and three days, <laughs> another cat in the same household that was 34, a dog in Australia that was 30, and another dog in Portugal that lived to be 31 and change. And my cat lived to be 20, well, actually he was 23 when he transitioned. But I want to also point out that he was vibrant and healthy and his eyes were were just sharp and his mental capacity was sharp and his coat was beautiful and he didn't have any muscle wasting at 23. So 
fantastic. And I, I remember. Yeah, yeah I remember Echo. <laughs> so we're not trying to say that any of us are going to live forever. No, we all have an exit strategy. But while we are in our earth suit, <laughs> we should be living the best life possible. And that means we have to take some ownership. We have to take ownership for ourselves and how we treat our body. And we have to take ownership for our pets because they can't make the choice. We are their pet guardian. So the more you learn about how to really take care of your pet, and that isn't just throwing food in a bowl and setting it down and taking a walk around the neighborhood. That is not a lifestyle that is conducive to longevity. We're the whole human side, of course, we're all into this anti-aging and all that. Well, rather than trying to do anti-aging, why don't we do pro-living? And that means looking at these blue zones where people live well into their hundreds and they are vibrant and they are still active and they're out gardening and working and they're over a hundred years of age. That's what I want to be. So I, that's my lifestyle. I live in a food forest. I work hard every day. I do high intensity exercise, but my high intensity may be out in the garden as well. You know, like you're digging up trees and planting trees and digging, you know, you're, it's work. And so that's what we need to be thinking of. How can we recreate a healthy lifestyle for our fur babies so that we are the best pet guardian? What do you see, Lisa? Well, um, I see that, yeah, for sure. I, when I, when I see the, um, my, my dog's on a, on a raw food diet and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just he, he's allergic to everything before, before I put him on this diet. And then I put him on a raw food diet and amazing changes. And, and like you say, these dogs are from when I first became an animal health tech, like. 20 years ago um yeah all the all the issues they're getting and whether it's like asthma like or not asthma but all these skin issues ear issues breathing issues and yeah and then so so yeah fascia release I find is amazing like I dealt with dogs that um that like ex um some of my dogs that I've been doing are um, retired police dogs and so much, so much built up stress and anxiety and, and because they've had quite hard lives and wow, the fascia release for them, like with their, with their, um, because all their muscles are just so tense, all their fascia is just, it's just, and, and like the, it's, it's amazing when you release that or when you do the ballooning of the, um, when you have the ballooning of the, uh, the chest and the the rib cage and then you release that and it's just incredible um yeah i even had a dog that uh four-year-old dog that that um had a luxated patella just a little little uh, dog named max that a uh, little poodle cross luxated patella at a, at a young age at around two and the dog was um hopping when it was walking on on when they took it for a walk and then um, just kind of, de she said, depressed. The, the groomer said the dog was depressed. And then after I started working, working on him, um, his tail was down all the time. Um, within two treatments, this dog went from being um, a depressed, very anxious dog to being happy. She said it was jumping off the couch no problem and it wasn't it wasn't uh lifting up its leg anymore walking and even she said after the fourth treatment they took they took the dog to the lake and normally the dog just shakes and trembles in the car because it's so nervous being in the car and it went from being um a very nervous dog to just being happy like she said it was yeah. found change in just four treatments and now the dog yeah she she does she she does a lot of it herself um she took she also took took the dog to the vets just for vac vaccinations and then and the dog and she very nervous very nervous so she started doing the same techniques that i had showed her and the dog calmed right down and just it, it it's incredible yeah yeah so one of the things i wanted to help our pet parents understand is that we are literally creating the problems within the fascia 
So inflammation, species inappropriate diets, eating foods with high sugar, processed GMOs, and then living a more sedentary lifestyle. Remember in the wild, these guys would have been out hunting and running down and catching their food. That's a lot of high intensity exercise in a short period of time. And they would have had uh, stressors on them, hormetic stressors, where sometimes they didn't get a meal to eat and so they had to go without food. So all of these natural mechanisms that help us to adapt and to thrive are not happening in these animals' lives. They're under artificial lights all day long, tons of electromagnetic pollution, our cell phones, our Wi-Fi, and they're not getting outside and really grounding to the earth. And I don't call, you know, walking around the block major amount of exercise. And that's what most people get in their dogs and their cats. My gosh, they're stuck inside the house all day long and they're lucky to jump on the back of the couch or on the counter. So we're creating this lifestyle where gravity and and stress and inflammation are creating these blockages using antibiotics. Uh, and I, I, I shouldn't say inappropriately because I think the veterinarians are doing it when they think it's the right thing to do. But I highly, highly question that because in 10 years, we won't have antibiotics anymore. That's from the AMA. They're literally saying that the antibiotic resistant levels are so high right now that they're not anticipating that we're going to have the benefit of antibiotics in 10 years. And I'm sure, Lisa, you're seeing in your clinic that you're having more and more animals where you do a culture and there's fewer and fewer things that it's responsive to. So we have this entire soup of a problem, right? We're losing our quick fixes. The ones that are still around have horrific side effects, the steroids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, terrific side effects. And I'm thrilled to see a lot of pet parents that are starting to recognize that. They're going, I don't know, you know, I, I, I maybe I shouldn't be giving that. So um, one of the cases, I don't have pictures, so I didn't present it, but it was a little dog that at four months of age, uh, started limping and the owners thought it just had bumped into its other housemate. And so they waited a week. It didn't get any better. They took it to their vet and their vet did an x-ray and said that it had leg perthy syndrome. It, it was um, a vascular necrosis of the femoral head. So it's a big, long, fancy word that was like really bad disease in the hip joint. So they were given a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. They their gut was, it shouldn't work, you know, I, it, it's a bad side effect, but they gave it for four days, it didn't help, and then they came to me. Well, I did a full workup on this dog, and it turns out the dog was deficient in almost every nutrient that it needed to run its biological pathways, from zinc, selenium, calcium, all off the board were low, very high in five heavy metals from mercury to strontium. This is a dog that is under a year of age. And so what we ended up doing is we did the fascia decompression um, and we did a chiropractic adjustment and we got this dog on nutrition. <laughs> we started detoxing him. And like literally within the first week, the dog stopped limping. So that was one example. I have another one. It, it, it's not related to fascia necessarily, but it came in with skin disease and up also under a year of age and also massively deficient in nutrients, massively deficient in the cofactors, very high in heavy metals, uh, vitamin. Both of these dogs were vitamin D deficient, magnesium and B12 deficient. So everything it takes to run the immune system, they weren't even on board. So these are dogs under a year of age the average veterinarian would never have tested for what I tested for. And therefore they would never have found out what they were deficient in. And so as they treated the symptom, ultimately it, the machine was gonna follow apart because it didn't have the nutrients it needed to do its job. So when I'm telling you guys that this work is phenomenal, but couple it with the things that are going to really help you understand the health of your pet. Because now if you can make sure they have their essential nutrients and you make sure that they're detoxing well and you add their fascia decompression, you just have a success formula that I wanna see these animals live into their 30s. And I think they should with high quality of life. I just wanna share so people have an understanding that don't know anything about fascia decompression because if you haven't done it on yourself, you don't even recognize how you might feel in your own body because the accumulation of adhesion 
riddled throughout the body is ongoing over our entire lifetime. So we are very adaptable. So we don't even recognize until we either have a limitation of movement or some kind of pain that comes to the surface that there's a problem. So imagine in your clothes, you've got shoes that are too tight. You've got a belt too tight. You've got gloves that are too tight and you've got a hat that's too tight. If you put that on all parts of the body in a moment, you're going to be uncomfortable. Now, if you've got that on for days, weeks, months, years, what's going to happen? So the reality is, and of course, everything plays together, but you can change all these things. You can change diet. You can change all of these things. But if you don't undo and give the space for the, for the tissue to flow, then that belt is going to stop those nutrients from getting into the leg tissue or the arms and hands or the head or whatever. And if you've got that belt tied so tightly around your core, you can't breathe properly. So now you're going to be taking shallow breaths because your, your body's built to survive, but we need to be able to have the expansion of the abdomen, the rib cage in order to thrive, to really utilize the diaphragm properly. So whether human or animal, if we are strangling the body with pressure and compression, then all of the other things, we're not going to have that flow, even if we do all of the best practices. So again, it's the combination of all of these best practices that really creates this opportunity for thriving. And so just, I just wanted to share that just to give people a little bit of insight as to what it feels like, because we don't know. I mean, people that are blocking that understand now the freedom that you have, you get a sense right away when you do the work and suddenly it's like, wow, my lip, my rib cage is lifted. I've, I've got a deeper breath. I can rotate more or, you know, you free up the feet and suddenly like you've got more mobility in, in that whole mechanism as opposed to it being like a club that you're walking on. So that's what we're doing for the pet is we're giving them the opportunity to undo those belts, to create that space so that as we do create change, there is an ease of nutrients in as well as an ease of the waste and the toxins out through all of the other great things that we're doing. So anyways, continue. That was the best analogy I have ever heard. <laughs> so that was well done. And, and I hope people will play this back over and over and over again, because what Deanna just shared is the truly it's the underpinning of our health. And we have to be able to to be the pet guardian that does it for our pet. So should you be doing block therapy yourself if you are not? Obviously the answer is yes, because then you can understand how your body is. Every time I'm in Deanna's presence, I am always more conscious of how I'm breathing. I'm sitting up a little taller, I'm belly breathing, you know, and sometimes I forget. We all do because we have these habits that we get into and this is untraining the bad habits and retraining into the good habits. So that was really wonderful. Lisa, how are you doing with your, I know you're with your pet cases have been phenomenal, but because you are trained in block therapy, are you able to help people understand better what's happening in their pets? For sure, um, because basically humans and, and dogs are very similar, right? We have the same, same kind of anatomy, same kind of, and um, yeah, um, I could, I can, I, I'll share my, my own experiences and how much block therapy has helped me. Um, with my breathing, with my, with my um, walking, with my posture, with my oh, mobility, it's, it's just been incredible. So why wouldn't that translate to your dog or your cat or whatever pet, right? So yeah, I, I just, I just love the practice. I, it's something that I will do lifelong and um, it's changed my, it's changed my whole, whole world. Yeah. Cause I was in a yeah. lot of pain before starting it. Everybody who does block therapy for themselves, that's a consistent thing I hear is it is life changing. And it is now you, you really start to understand your body. You start to take care of your body. Remember guys, this is the only earth suit that we have. We need to make it last and then help our pets do that. So the, the whole conversation that we're having is such a difference in consciousness. It's taking responsibility for our life and our health and not relying on a practitioner or a veterinarian to help you and your pet be healthier. Because honestly, 
they really don't know the difference. They don't know better. You have to know better to do better and you guys are learning so that you know better and you can do better as an advocate for your pets. But this is not stuff that's taught in veterinary school. We're not even taught nutrition in veterinary school. We were taught that the lymphatic system was the producer of our B and, and T lymphocytes. Yes, that's wonderful, but we weren't taught how to keep it healthy. And isn't it a frightful thought that lymphoma cancer of the lymphatic system is one of the biggest cancers that we have and yet we were never taught how to keep the lymphatics happy interesting to me right it just makes you go hmm <laughs> that's interesting why would that be but we you know we're taught symptom suppression in school and there's not a veterinarian on this planet that wants to do harm to their pets or to their patients. They really have the heart of angels in their desire to do good for their patients, but they may not know that there's another toolkit out there because they were only taught through medical school how to practice allopathic medicine, how to do symptom suppression, great at diagnosing. Oh my gosh, there's not a vet out there that can't name it and blame it and come up with a pharmaceutical. So that's great, but that in our complex world, that's not enough anymore. You know, back, I'm practicing 40 years, 40. And when I started practicing, cancer was one a year, two a year. It was so rare that we saw cancer that I didn't even really learn about cancer. Now I'm seeing on average 10 cancer cases a week. So we're talking, and then if I add my consultations, it's even higher than that. So it's a big deal. The type of diseases that we're seeing now are far more complex, far more involved, and it takes a, a different toolkit and a different mindset. You know, Einstein said you can't solve problems with the same mindset that created them. We are living in a world of fast, cheap, and convenient, and it's gotten us very unhealthy. <laughs> So we need to change that mindset and we need to reconnect with who we authentically are. We need to work on our own lifestyles, our pets' lifestyles, and Mother Earth. Deanna knows I'm, I'm really big about growing food. I live in a food forest. And, but it's all connected, right? You know how the, the roots of all of our trees and plants, they speak to each other through the mycelium. They actually communicate about what's going on within their own grouping. Well, I think we do the same thing. I think we communicate on a level as well. So we need to get back outside with our pets, start grounding and do your fascia work outside. <laughs> I love how you call it an earth suit because it really, like it's kind of like owning a disease. Like I have anxiety or my cells are anxious. My body is riddled with problems or my earth suit has issues. <laughs> you know, like I like that because now I can put it over here and say, okay, now I can look at it from an objective lens as opposed to, ah, I'm riddled with whatever. What do I do? How do I get back on track? Yeah. Right? It can be overwhelming, especially if yeah. we have multiple years, multiple diagnoses, you know, multiple everything. Cause I mean, that's just it. Like, it's not like, okay, I sprain my ankle anymore and I have a bad ankle. It's like, okay, I've sprained my ankle and my body doesn't know how to heal itself anymore because it is so riddled with toxins and we've got a really weak breath and all of these other things. So, you know, what, what is fascinating though, and I see it all the time in my body as well as others, even amidst what we're dealing with this toxic soup that we're living in, when we turn on that diaphragm and we clean the body properly with the detoxification of the abilities that we actually have inside that are free, we can withstand so much. Like it kind of blows my mind that we're even walking around anymore, considering what we are being afflicted with yet here we are. And, you know, <laughs> some of us are thriving because we know what to do and how to manage what is being thrown at us. I mean, just the resiliency of this beautiful earth suit, like it's, it's wild. So to give it a little bit of time and attention, you know, if you've got a beautiful Ferrari, you probably put more time and attention into that car than you do your earth suit, but let's switch over and realize this is the, Ferrari. <laughs> like, is, is, is it running like a K car? My very first car that I bought for a thousand dollars lasted about a month. <laughs> or, you know, is it like a really well-oiled machine that can withstand things and that, you know, if there's a, a challenge, you can repair it pretty efficiently. So let's, let's take a peek at some of the, um, I think you've got some cool before and afters, don't you? Yeah, I've got two cases to show you. I'm going to share my screen and all right, so let's pull this baby up. 
Um, I kept it short and simple, but pretty dramatic. And Deanna, if you will, as we look at the videos, if you will describe, you're going to love this. Deanna hasn't seen these cases yet, so I'm so excited to share. So this is Max, two years old, male neuter Shih Tzu. He had um, tried to jump on the bed and he became a little wobbly. And then um, over the, the next few days, he got worse and worse where he would twist his hips when he walked. And the owner thought maybe he was scooting, but, but you'll see him uh, literally, he twists himself to the left with his hips. And he was like that for over six weeks. They noticed he was having a hard time having a bowel movement. So they put him on some fiber. Uh, but basically, their vet didn't know what to do. So look on the left. He would literally take a first step and he would start to just crank his body, didn't cry didn't act like he was in pain, but look at him just walking to the side. Now, the picture on the right shows that his tail was literally pulled off to the left side. So here he is, he's come into my office and I videoed him before I did anything. And you'll see he takes a couple steps and then boom, he just, he can't walk straight. It's like whatever that spasm was. And that's how he was most of the time. So we took x-rays and there is some degeneration going on between where the last ribs are and the beginning of the lumbar spine. So where you see the ribs are the parts that are going like around the body for those who don't know x-rays and where the big round thing is in the middle of his stomach is his stomach. He was full of gas. Um, so he was just breathing and uncomfortable and then the ventral dorsal this is the one that i found most intriguing so you can see that there's a lot of discs that are narrow each vertebrae they sit on top of each other and there's a little space in between and you can see that space is narrow but where i have the arrows pointing there is a subtle contraction of the muscles and that's on his left side so as those muscles contract it pulls his hips over and it bulges his chest out the other direction. Deanna, you can describe that a little bit better. So let's hear it from your analysis. Yeah, so basically those are the adhesions or false walls and false floors that get created. So um, if, if there's an actual injury to an area, there's a gap in the system. So the second law of thermo thermodynamics is nature abhors a gradient. So if we have a tear in the muscle or a tendon or a break in the bone, that's a gap. So what's going to happen is inflammation is going to get driven over to that space. And if we address inflammation properly, then we can actually rebuild that tissue correctly. However, if we don't understand how to apply that approach to the body when there's injury, what happens is we heal with scar tissue. So here's this gap. So all of the collagen, so col like fascia is a combination of collagen and elastin, and there needs to be a balance. The elastin provides that mobility. The collagen gives us the structure. So we're not just a puddle. So here we have this gap. So what's happening here when we develop scar tissue is the collagen in the surrounding areas gets dumped into that space, kind of like filling a pothole. And Lisa's from Winnipeg, so she'll know very well, like myself in Winnipeg, we have potholes everywhere. So they get filled in, but that's not a real repair because every single spring, the potholes are back. We need to repair that whole street in order for there to be like, you know, a healthy, good road again, that's not going to continue to be um, creating potholes. So when we have scar tissue from any kind of injury, that's what happens is the collagen gets dumped in. Now the collagen doesn't have elastability. So basically it's like a concrete mesh in these spaces. So as we're trying to move, now we have these areas of restriction that don't allow us to move and they tighten and they, they become tense. And then they grip because the more scar tissue, the more collagen continues to get drawn toward that because it's dense tissue. Gravity loves density. So when we are perfectly aligned, we have space everywhere. And gravity doesn't have a lot of control or power over a spacious body. But when we become dense, from injury, from surgery, from lack of proper breathing, incorrect posture, 
then gravity manipulates us very quickly. So obviously there was some kind of something that happened to this little guy and created some kind of injury. So now we've got the scar tissue. And now as it's continuing to accumulate more collagen, it's twisting and gripping to bone and it's bringing that left side into this shortened stance. So as um, Max is trying to go through a normal walking process, he's getting pulled over to that side all the time. And that's going to continue to add more collagen into that area as well. So once it starts, it continues to form faster and faster and faster. The work that we do melts through the scar tissue and creates a release of those adhesions because adhesions and scar tissue are essentially the same thing in regards to what they do to the body. It's both collagen. Scar tissue, it happens in a moment. With adhesions, it's an ongoing accumulation of collagen through the layers of fascia as the body's trying to be stable. So this is what happens. The collagen is like actually the problem because it's migrated from its balance. So now we've got concrete blocks all over the body and it's it's creating a challenge to movement. Wow, great explanation. So I had done a chiropractic adjustment and I'm gonna show you when animals integrate energy, they do shakes. Now that was a phenomenal shake. It went all the way from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail. Remember what that looked like because most of your pets that are having issues, their shake will stop somewhere from their shoulder blades or the middle of their back. So this, I just wanted to show you how his tail would get pulled over to the left. So I'm just hitting an acupuncture point on the PSIS joint and it was just like pulling it over. So now he's doing a couple good shakes, but he's still going to spasm. So he's had two good shakes. He's really integrating, but he still has, here we go. It's almost ready to happen. Number three. And now you're gonna see him like it just, all of a sudden, you can see it starting, and there he goes. Now, it wasn't as bad, belt but it's still around. doing. Yeah, so like I can really see the belt just on the, um, what's it called? What side of the hips? <laughs> Toward okay. the hips. In, in front of the pelvis? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play that again. So here, let's let's play it again. Can you describe, I can pause if you want. Do you have a picture of him just from straight above? At any point, so we can. Actually um, I we can take it out of the video. Yeah, well, right there while he's standing. When, when we can see like a line in, you can, like that's that's an adhesion that's basically like putting a belt on. So it, that it looks like right at the back of his ribs. It looks like he's sunken in a little bit, like he has a rib there. Yes. Okay. So there's no there's there's very little flow getting to that space because of those adhesions because of that scar tissue. All and right. with flow, we don't have energy, right? We've got cells that aren't given that oxygen, which the mitochondria need to work and, and all of those good things. Also, we get um, toxins trapped when, we, when we've got those areas of compression. So um, keep going. Let's see what's going on. So um, before I play the video, um, Deanna, if you'll describe what I'm doing and how Max is holding up that left hind leg. Yeah, ever so much. So right now we're doing one of the releases to allow heat and energy to come in through the rib cage. And by doing that, that allows more space for the breath to be stronger. So especially, I mean, whether human or animal, pain, fear, and stress cause us to reactively hold the breath. And so if we're in pain all the time, we're breathing pretty shallow unless we understand how to change that. So of course the animal will intuitively bring it in when given the energy to do so. The human has a few more challenges because we get caught up in our mindset about what pain is and limitation. But what we're doing right now is we're putting pressure into those ribs. So we're basically creating more space. We're also allowing those legs to start to fall. And you can see how that left hip is hung up because it's getting pulled up by those adhesions. The right one is definitely a lot lower. So the goal is we want there to be balance in both of those legs as we're hanging, but the pressure itself, pressure over time creates heat. And this is all about heating the body because when there's adhesions and scar tissues riddled, scar tissue riddled throughout, the body's colder and cold means less flow. In Winnipeg here, Lisa and I know, 
that if it's minus 30 outside and you want to start your car, you might have to let it run for 30 minutes before you can drive it. If it's minus 10, you might only need it to let it run a few minutes. If it's summertime, you just go and you drive your car. So when our body is nice and heated, we have the energy for movement. When it's frozen, we need to heat it up in order for it to move, or we end up moving in a very rigid way, which just continues to accumulate more adhesions and more cooling. So it really does come down to heating up the breath. And this process is really all about doing that, creating that space for that optimal ability to pull in oxygen and remove toxins. Beautiful. I could sit here and listen to you all day. So we did this exercise for three minutes, but this is literally the video. And I want you to see how quickly he releases that left hind leg. Just letting the gravity of his own body straighten him out. Ah, uh, nice. And now he just dropped his feet. And he actually got, see the licking that he did? That's another endorphin release. And then we did the left side, the right side, and we did the tail pull, which is another technique. And I'm just kind of talking to him in the, in the right side picture. I'm talking to him. I'm actually not pushing him down. Um, and then his owner has him on the other side. And you can just see how relaxed he was in doing this stretch. So Deanna, you want to describe a little bit more about that stretch? Yeah. So gravity is our friend when we use it for that purpose. So as you are moving him into that left alignment, we've got that gravity being able to pull down that whole left side and open up those adhesions that have torqued him in that negative space. And it is so comforting because it's like you're giving the body a hug and the cells that have not been receiving proper amounts of nutrients, they're hungry and they've been kind of pushed away from consciousness. So to bring it back and to really connect, it's a beautiful feeling. It calms the nervous system down. It puts humans as well as animals into that parasympathetic nervous system. And you can see that like Max isn't struggling here. Max is kind of, you know, taking it in and receiving the energy and allowing what to happen to happen. And again, like it was quite fascinating, Dr. Siegel, when we started this work, because I've always worked with humans. And then because of you, I started working with animals and to see how much faster they integrate than the human. And I mean, we're, we're kind of all the same. If I've been limping for 10 years, even if I've had a treatment, I'm going to get up and I'm still going to probably move into that limp because that's what my habit has been where what we've seen with the animals is they could be in a situation for however long we do the work and then they just own it and they're running and it's like wow like they they forgot that they even had a problem so it's it's really fascinating to see the difference because they don't have that ego to say wait a sec I'm supposed to be limping right now because I've been doing it for so long <laughs> yes they're not attached to their problems and so we did this for three minutes on each side in the three minutes on the first exercise. And now this is six hours later. And the first video, I want you to see how positioned Max's tail is Come on, Max. in his body. Remember how it was over to the side? Much straighter, much straighter. It's almost even right there. And here's the magic. Are you ready? Drum roll. Still doing his integration, by the way. Notice how many times he's shaking. He does the body Inside shake. Arm. Oh my gosh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. One more time. And what I love about this, Dr. Siegel, is the fact that, you know, you did this kind of in a moment in a day, but when people have this to do all the time, then again, like looking after your own body and being this like, you know, version of yourself where you're thriving, you can make sure that with very little effort and time, you can keep your pets in that same space. And that's what the owner does. He does the hanging, he does the left and the right, and they're doing it on a consistent basis. The whole family takes turns doing it. And he has not taken one cramp since he left my office. And that was literally six hours, no drugs. <laughs> How amazing is that? Woo, 
Max. Okay, this was Clayball. Now, remember, Max was under two years of age. Clayball was 11 years old, a male neutered bully, and he tried to jump on the bed. Seems to be a consistent thing, but he didn't make it. And then seemed fine. Owners went to bed that night. The next day they got up and he was paralyzed. We don't see as many large breed dogs paralyzed. So his mom came in really thinking this was going to be the end. And they didn't want, we did x-rays and we did blood work. We did a full workup. He had, we don't get that information back right away. So he did have a lot of deficiencies, which we addressed. And he had a lot of toxicities, which we addressed. But that wasn't what we were able to make the biggest difference on. So this was a lot of his therapy. So he had chiropractic adjustment, E-STEM. We did cryotherapy on his back, um, a lot of hyperbaric every day, IV ozone, rectally and intravenously. We did PRP, prolozone, which is um, we injected, we collected his blood, which has stem cells in it. And we mixed it with some ozone and some other nutrients and we injected him along his spine. And then we did laser therapy along the spine. We did lymphatic therapy, fascia decompression, a vibration plate frequency, changed his diet, got him on supplements. And we were really focused on reducing the inflammation. The owner was continuing all the fascia work at home. Now he was a larger dog, so she wasn't holding him up, but we have in our course, we have the techniques on how to do a larger animal and still get the same effect. And this is him um, 10 days into therapy. Now his gait is not normal. I want you to notice that his left and his left side moves together and his right side moves together. That is technically not a normal gait. But you know what? For right now, we were thrilled. The dog is walking and walking well. And then it only took another few days before his actual integration of the nervous system. And he started taking the normal left, front, right, rear, right, front, left, rear, you know, four beat gait. Right here, he's almost like a pacer. And wow. for the sake of time, I didn't put the other ones in, but I mean, he, this is the same dog. He's walking. If he never got past that, his owners would have been thrilled, but he returned to 100% normal in under two weeks. Wow. No steroids, no surgery. Yeah. That is so exciting. Oh my gosh. That just like makes your heart like just expand immensely. Hey, it's just beautiful. Yeah. And, and, you know, I could go on and on. I, I have hours of literally hours of videos and it's such a warming feeling to know that we're able to do such good for these animals and it's not a quick fix it is actually getting to the root of the problem because the owners that are working with me are they're fixing the diet they're fixing the deficiencies they're fixing the mitochondria they're getting rid of the toxins they're detoxifying if it's something like heavy metals and they're they're taking those steps to actually improve the way the body can function the body knows what to do it's so much more intelligent than we are and yet it's having a challenging time overcoming the amount of stuff we throw at it so now we have opportunities to be able to affect the body its motion its communication its ability to oxygenate and detoxify all through this fascia system and it's something that can be in the hands pun intended <laughs> it can be in the hands of every owner there's no tools involved it's you and your hands and your pet and your love and desire to see that animal stay healthy and thriving wow i i want a dog named clayball first of all that is the cutest thing i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> yeah but also um so that that was just amazing. Like I just, every time I see it, it's just mind blowing how quickly change can take place when you do the right things. Um, and again, faster for the animal than the human typically. Um, so love that we have this program already set out. So, you know, parent pet parents can get the program right away and start with the love. Um, also in our program, Dr. Siegel, you also share um, a piece of your other program that really teaches parents how to navigate the detoxification, the proper feeding, how to communicate um, with your vet so that you know what you're looking for if you have questions or, or problems like that. So that in itself creates this wonderful full-on course. But 
also, and this is a bit of a future thing, but this is what we're going to be doing. We're also going to be creating a process for the vet tech to take this and become certified in this process as well. And I mean, that's why we have Lisa here as well, because she is a vet tech who's dove right into this and seen those results. So Lisa, do you have any kind of last words that you want to share with people as, as a future possibility of what's to come potentially, and just your experiences with all the different dogs that you've been working with? Cause I know they're not all your pets that you're working with. Right. Right. Yes. Um, one thing I was going to mention um, is um, that I had noticed that dogs that that tend to that live in town and tend to get walked on a leash or that tent, right, they have a collar they're pulling or even on a harness um, that ad adhesions in their necks, neck area and shoulder area, I find to be, yeah, a lot different than dogs that are out on the farm or out or they take them to the dog park or they, so think of that the next time you take your dog for a walk and he's pulling, um, or they're pulling, um, if you can take them someplace that they can run, like, 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 like a normal dog would, right. When, when you're restricting them to a, to a leash, um, then you get a whole, a whole other set of issues, right. Because they're not, they're not, they're not walking like they should be, or they're, they're, they're pulling. So, I just wanted to add that because I know uh, Dr. Seagal was talking about um, um, taking the dogs out and walking around the walking around the uh, the block is is just not enough and 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 even being on a leash I find that uh, that it does change their um, their whole posture their their whole alignment so um, but yeah I after C Dr. Seagal talked about the the uh, um, Clayball and, and Max, I wow, what amazing changes! I I can't even beat that. I can't even top that. But um, I I have I've seen a lot of amazing changes to a dog named Charlie who who um, who walked in very lame. Uh, I guess four, fourteen year old lab walked in very lame, and um, and the dog had been lame for for several years, um, and and she had been treating the dog with with omega threes and glucosamine chondroitin all naturally, which is which is great because if they're on pain medication, I find they don't release quite quite as quite as well. Um, but the after after one treatment, the dog walked out not not lame on its left front leg and and just got up and it, it was it was pretty cool just working on the uh, um, working in that armpit area, working on the the ballooning of their rib cage that side rib cage area and then into the hip flexors and that yeah it was it was pretty cool to see the dog walk out of the room in uh in no more discomfort so i love that you mentioned that about the leash because here's your belt right on the neck i mean and then yeah. you know if, if if you have a dog that's really well trained it might not be pulling lots but if you've got the dog that's like you know all over the place trying to sniff everything and it's like doing yeah. that that's really going to I mean just imagine that on your own self right like how that's going to impact you know how you adjust your body for movement and yeah like that that's that's really impactful yeah yeah well you guys are amazing and I'm blessed and honored to be in a tribe where we are really impacting a massive amount of people in the world and now a massive amount of pets in the world. So, you know, my tagline is changing the world, many people, many pets, many thoughts, and many actions at a time. And this really is coming to fruition, you know, where we're able to help people through knowing better, through education, being able to do better, and then being able to impact others. Because as we learn, I think it is the, the onus is on us to share, you know, right? So because it's that snowball effect, it's the ripple effect. As we learn and we become passionate about what we do and we share it and share it and share it and those people share it, share it, share it, you know, through social media, through educational programs, through uh, taking the fascia decompression course or and the block therapy and podcasts and all these opportunities that we have in the most amazing time period ever in the world where education and community can happen in the click of a computer button. And, and yet we're all connected 
right? And Deanna and Lisa, they're in Canada, I'm in Florida, and yet we're still able to communicate and share together in a platform that impacts so many people. I think that's amazing. So I'm honored and blessed to be part of your tribe. And I encourage everybody who is listening to this video to become part of the tribe with us. Be part of the solution. Don't be part of the problem. Be part of the solution. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. Siegel. Thank you so much, Lisa. We will have the link for the uh, fashion decompression for your fur family below, as well as Dr. Siegel's link. If you're wanting to reach out to her, uh, definitely amazing information. You will not find, in my opinion, a vet better able to handle with the scope of knowledge and wisdom to be able to give your pet the best possible outcome. So thank you all as well for taking the time to listen and, and keep posted because we're going to have some pretty awesome advancements coming in the not too distant future. So thanks everyone. Take care.